Okay, so we're going to have a look at the um, circulatory system. And uh, when we do that, uh, one of the things you have to consider is what is the job of the circulatory system. And for now, anyhow, what we'll do is we'll say that the job of the circulatory system is to move materials around in the body, so transport. And also, it plays an important part uh, in the immune system. There's three parts to the circulatory system. There are the, uh, the blood vessels that contain blood and move it around. There's the heart that pumps the blood. And then there's the blood itself. And we'll be looking at each of these things separately. But we're going to start by having a look at the blood vessels. So if you look at this picture, I've left the, uh, the words on. There's certain words on this thing that really don't matter that much to you, so I'm not too concerned about the endothelium or the basement membrane and things like that. But there's stuff on here that is valuable, and what I really like about this picture is the fact that there is an actual uh, microscope photograph, a photomicrograph at the very top. It kind of gives you an idea of what some of these things look like. So let's have a look by starting with arteries. And so the artery you can see here uh, is on the left-hand side, so there's the artery right there. And we're going to define arteries as any blood vessel that takes blood away from the heart. And there's a few things that you need to consider when you uh, think about having to take blood away from the heart because the blood comes out of the heart under pressure. Every time the ventricles contract and the heart pumps more blood into the system, the pressure of, uh, that's, that the blood exerts on the walls of the vessels goes up. And so one of the things you'll see in arteries is, is that they're well equipped to deal with excess blood pressure or extra blood pressure. And the way they do that, you can see here, is through this layer of smooth muscle tissue. The smooth muscle tissue uh, allows uh, some control of blood pressure. Okay, so I've changed pens and now I'll see if I can make some arrows on this thing. So here is the smooth muscle. And the idea with the smooth muscle is that when it contracts, the inside diameter of the artery gets smaller, which would cause blood pressure to go up. And when it relaxes, it means that the inside diameter of the blood vessel would get bigger, which would mean that the blood pressure would go down. And so the arteries have, uh, to some extent, the capacity to change blood pressure and, uh, and make it higher or lower as is needed by the body. The other thing that's necessary here is a bunch of elastic tissue, and here we've got it listed as, as connective tissue, but you have to understand what elasticity is. The whole idea with elastic tissue is that it can stretch and then it can snap right back to its original size. This is important because as the heart pumps, it fires a bunch of blood into the arteries. The arteries expand out because of the excess blood pressure. But once the blood is through, they sort of snap back to their original size. And what this does is it maintains adequate blood pressure to move the blood along. You should notice that even though these two vessels, the artery on the left and the, the vein on the right, are the same outside diameter, the inside diameter is, is, is much different. And the, the vein has a much larger inside diameter. You can really see this well when you look at this picture over here. You can see that the vein is very, very big on the inside, whereas the artery is not. And we'll show you a little later on uh, why that matters. Arteries start large when they leave the heart, but very quickly they branch off. And so on this picture, you can see some of the branches. There's an artery branching off. Here's another one. And so arteries generally get smaller and smaller and smaller. But they're still arteries because they're still bringing blood away from the heart. And they still have the same issues that all arteries have, lots of blood pressure, the ability to snap back, all that kind of thing. After a while, the arteries get so small that um, we actually give them their own name, and we call them arterioles. There's the arterioles right there. And the arterioles are defined as the tiniest of all arteries. They're extremely small. And what they always do is they always bring blood to the next kind of blood vessel, which we call capillaries. And so right here, those are capillaries. And it's the arterioles that deliver the blood to the capillaries. Remember that arterioles are still arteries, so they have all the characteristics of arteries. They're just very, very small. The capillaries are kind of the business end of, of the bloodstream. They're the smallest of all blood vessels, but they're also the most numerous by a long shot. You literally have millions and millions of capillaries all through your body. And if you look at this picture, it looks like they're arranged in like a little clump or something like that. 
we call that a capillary bed, and all the tissues of your body, your legs and arms and brain and every last part of you, is loaded up with all these capillary beds. And interesting stuff happens in the capillaries. This is the place where the transport and dropping off and picking up of all the stuff that's carried by the blood actually happens. It's here that the materials that the blood carries to the cells gets dropped off, things like glucose and amino acids and nucleotides and things like that, oxygen. And it's also the place where stuff that various kinds of cells are producing and uh, putting into the blood get picked up. So things like carbon dioxide and certain wastes and hormones and, and those kinds of molecules. It's very useful to think of the bloodstream a little bit like a like a highway system. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to um, drive a big semi-truck from Vancouver to Montreal, and you had to pick up something in Montreal or in Vancouver, and then you had to drive it out to Montreal and then drop it off. Well, if you think about that, the place where you would be picking up your stuff in Vancouver would likely be in some industrial place where you have tiny little roads, just like capillaries are tiny. You would back your truck up to some loading bay or something like that, and you would pick up the stuff that you have to pick up, and then you would drive away down a small street, which would ultimately connect up to a somewhat bigger street, which would connect up to an even larger street, and after a while you would be on a fairly large road, something like the Trans-Canada Highway, and you would take that fairly large road all the way across the country and all the way out to Montreal. While you were on the fairly large road, you wouldn't be stopping to pick up materials or dropping materials off. That road is for traveling and it's not for exchanging materials. Then when you got to Montreal, you would get off of the main highway and you would get onto smaller and smaller and smaller roads until finally you would get into the place where this, uh, this exchange had to be done. It'd be a little bit like, if you follow the arrow here, here you are going down Highway 401, and you get to Montreal, so you take a big exit, and then you have to take another exit, and another exit, and finally you end up in these tiny little roads where the exchange of materials actually happens. And that's a little bit like it works with blood vessels and capillaries and all of that. Since capillaries uh, are the place where materials are exchanged, they have to have certain characteristics that allow them to do that well. One of the things you'll notice is that capillaries are one cell layer thick. And we've already told you, if you look here, there's a capillary. Uh, one cell layer thick almost always means that materials are going to move across it. You know, we looked at um, the villi, they had one cell layer around the outside. It meant that materials could be absorbed. Well, now you've got capillaries, and they're one cell layer thick. That makes them extremely small. In fact, capillaries are so small that they're microscopic. You can't see them in this picture up here. They're not there. Um, they're, uh, they're sometimes so small that blood cells, individual red blood cells, kind of line up single file to go through them. So that gives you an idea how little they are. Besides being only one cell layer thick, they're also very leaky. I don't know if you've ever seen those black garden hoses that your parents run through their flower bushes in the summer. And um, it's you turn the water on and water kind of comes spraying out of these things in a bit of a fine mist. We call them soaker hoses. And they're leaky on purpose. Capillaries are also leaky on purpose. So blood goes into the capillaries and uh, some of the fluid in the blood leaks out right through the capillary walls and into the surrounding tissue. And as it does that, it takes the stuff that you're delivering to the cells with it. And so this is how the exchange is actually done. After materials are exchanged, you can see that the capillaries again uh, begin to join back together. So here we are in the capillaries and they join together and together and together until we get to the next kind of blood vessel. And uh, we'll be speaking about veins for the rest of this thing. And we define a vein as something that returns blood back to the heart. So arteries took blood away from the heart. This is delivering the blood back to the heart. And, um, and so this, this guy right here, this little tiny vessel, is a venule. And venules are the smallest of all veins. They are, by definition, the vessels that drain the blood away from capillary beds. So we had arterioles bringing blood into the capillary bed. Now we have venules taking blood out of the capillary bed. 
And like we had before, we have little branches that lead to bigger branches that ultimately lead to some of the largest veins in your body. And I have another video a little later on that talks about some of that. But now the blood then enters the vein and returns back to the heart. Veins are a long way away from the heart, and so they have completely different internal conditions than the arteries did. Remember that the heart was pumping blood directly into the arteries under a lot of pressure. By the time the blood gets to the veins, it's gone through zillions of, of capillaries. Uh, they have a lot of, of internal area, and uh, we're a long way from the heart. And so our blood pressure has dropped way off. In fact, blood pressure in veins is extremely low. Um, there's a lot of internal friction and stuff like that. I'll describe that more in class. But you just have to know that blood pressure in the veins is very, very low. And that leads us to a bit of a problem. And the problem is, how do you get the blood back to the heart, uh, mostly going uphill? Let's imagine for a sec that the blood is in the bottom of your feet or in your legs or something like that. If you've got to get it up to your heart, it's kind of fighting gravity all the way and it doesn't really have any blood pressure to push it along, so it, we, we've got some problems. Um, if you look at the inside of the heart, one of the things you'll see is that it, ha or not the heart, the inside of a vein, you'll see that they have a very large internal diameter. That again um, makes the, uh, the pressure lower. It's almost useful to think of veins as being a little bit baggy compared to arteries. Arteries have all this smooth muscle. Veins have smooth muscle too, but they don't have as much. And they also don't have much elastic tissue. They're really not very elastic at all. And so all those things together makes it a little bit difficult for blood uh, to actually move through your veins. To help it along, uh, there's a couple of, I guess you could call them homeostatic mechanisms, something that is um, designed in order to get the blood back to the heart, even though you don't have a whole lot of uh, blood pressure. One of the things that helps this uh, is where the, the major veins in your body are actually located. Quite often you will find veins located right between skeletal muscle. I mean, you might remember that skeletal muscle is the, is the type of muscle that you control. These are the big muscles in your body, the ones in your legs and arms and stuff like that. So if you have a muscle like this, there's a muscle, and then you have another muscle beside it, like this, then quite often what you'll find is a vein that runs right in between those. And so what I'll do is I'll make this guy a different color so you can see it. So now you've got a vein that goes between the muscles. When that vein, uh, sorry, when those muscles contract, they get shorter and thicker and they push kind of against the walls of the vein like that. And what they do is they kind of force the blood um, into the vein in both the up and down directions. It's a little bit like if you had a, um, a, a tube of toothpaste or something and you squeezed it in the middle. Toothpaste would go up and toothpaste would go down. Now, of course, what you want is you only want the blood to go up. You don't want it to go down because you're trying to get it back to the heart. In order to fix that, we have valves. They're one-way valves, and they're on the insides of veins. And what happens is they allow the blood to move in the direction, the one-way direction, in this case up, but the blood cannot go back down. And so what you'll find is that when the muscles squeeze together, they force the blood up through the one-way valves, but the blood that tries to go down just hits another valve below, and it can't go any further. So you get kind of a situation like this, and I'll draw you what I'm talking about. So here's a vein. And here's a one-way valve in the vein. Oops, I can't draw. There you go. And then you have another one down here. And so when the muscles squeeze, that forces the blood up and down. But what if it goes down, it can't go past this vein, so it just stays there. And so the blood can go up, but it cannot go down. And uh, that gets the blood back to the heart eventually. So that's kind of a good summary of the different uh, veins that are part of the circulatory system. Just a very quick review here. Arteries are defined as the blood vessels that take blood away from the heart. Um, they branch and branch again until they get to the, become the very smallest of arteries. They're called arterioles, and this is an arteriole right here. Arterioles deliver blood into the capillary beds. Capillaries are the tiniest of all blood vessels. They are the ones where the, um, 
and the exchange of materials between the blood and the cells takes place, so they drop materials off out of the blood and they pick materials up from the cells. Then they connect back together and form the smallest of all veins, which are called venules. Veins deliver the blood back to the heart, so they branch and rebranch until you have the major veins that deliver the blood to the heart. There's not a whole lot of blood vessel, oh sorry, blood pressure in a vein, so they have to have ways to get the blood from the bottom part of your body and, and back up into the heart. They do that by being situated between major muscles that when they contract force the blood through the vessels and also they have a lot of one-way valves which ensure that the blood only flows in the right direction. Over on the artery side, the arteries have to contend with a lot of uh, blood pressure. That means that they have to have smooth muscle and, and elastic tissue that allows them to snap back. You can actually feel that when you feel your pulse. Every time you feel a pulse, that's a little shot of blood going through an artery. The artery expands to let the blood through and then snaps back to its original size, and that's what you feel. Anyway, I hope this was useful to you. Ask me if you have any questions.